everybody. And just a few seconds ago, Jared was barely able to contain nope. his no. poker face. <laughs> yeah, welcome to Dice Camera Action, uh, where D and D can be fun and full of tears at the same time. And last week, the Waffle Crew left Port Nyanzaru on the Brazen Pegasus, a sloop uh, that could outrun any pirate vessel, uh, avoid aerial entanglements, and make the Kessel Run in <laughs> 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 some, some, some real distance. And uh, as they were leaving the Bay of Chult, they had an encounter with Aramag the Dragon Turtle, and an encounter with Evil Paulton, who pulled uh, DF's key out of the black egg bomb, causing it to tick down until DF wisely stuck a new key in. Um, and long story short, Evil Paulton and the egg were fed to the dragon turtle. The egg, uh, the, the key taken out of it, the bomb exploded, having huge. Uh, a calamitous effect. Uh, the ship was pushed on a wave out of the Bay of Chult. The shock wave went over Port Nyanzaru, um, blowing out windows, toppling statues, and uh, also as the people sort of stand near the, uh, the markets and in the harbor, they see this great swell of water come at them. Uh, slam into the breakers, uh, go over the lighthouse, and flood into the harbor. The Waffle Crew, carried on this wave, uh, escapes serious harm, thanks in great measure to the talents and skill of the crew of the Brazen Pegasus, who were able to keep the ship basically riding the wave the entire distance. And as you spill out into the open sea, you saw, or as you recall, there were great storm clouds closing in upon you um, and threatening uh, uh, even more danger ahead. You can see Captain Ortome and her crew are well aware of the storm that they're heading into and are already bracing the ship for that conflict. What do you guys do when the waves finally settle? So the moment that the... the everything kind of settles and everyone just kind of has that moment to kind of look at each other and remember that uh, they're all still alive and they're okay. Uh, DF runs to the back of the boat towards Port Nyanzaru and just tries to uh, look back at it. Uh, Cause I'm not, I'm not entirely sure how far away we are from it. You're a good distance. You wouldn't see much without a spyglass. Okay. So, uh, with that, he immediately turns back to the rest of the crew and in a panicked voice uh, starts saying, uh, can anyone see? Can anyone see? Uh, everyone back there's okay, right? No one got hurt, they're all okay. Port night, the port, they're, they're fine, right? Everything's okay? And just uh, constantly repeating that almost in a panic uh, as he looks at the crew and looking back at the, at the port uh, trying to see what kind of devastation could have possibly happened. Okay. While that's happening, Strix is going to throw up over the side of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> that was a rough ride. <laughs> okay. Uh, what are Paulton and Evelyn doing? I think did, hadn't Paul, or Evelyn had grabbed on to Paulton when they were riding the wave, I think. Yeah, that, that sounds right. Yeah. So I think she's still like just like clutching him in shock and she's kind of like gripping you really really hard, Paul. Tom. Yeah, <laughs> and she's just like looking in confusion at everything that happened, and she had just asked him like, "Why did you do that?" When everything <laughs> blew up, and now Diaz blubbering, and he is asking like, "Everything's okay, right?" And she's just going, Paulton, as you recall, your your mandolin uh, went into the beast as well with your evil <sighs> doppelganger. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I don't think he forgot. Okay. Uh, Paulton just kind of, he's just like staring out. Like, I'm assuming like kind of in the direction from where we like got blasted from. Mm -hmm. He's just like, just 
watching as like where the mandolin still well i guess was now but now it's probably just in pieces as it just like is slowly still just like going further and further away it's just like great uh chris can you confirm that are were there actual pieces of the mandolin floating in the sea because i thought evil paulton had grabbed it he did it went into the beast yeah he grabbed it and then got uh ba- as he was being thrown by Evelyn, Evelyn, sorry, into the maw of the creature, he took the mandolin off her, and the two, both he and the mandolin, went into its mouth. Right. Uh, basically, I'm trying to ask for if there's um, uh, any signs of kill confirmed. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> like so did- so uh, you can probably see evidence of matter falling from the sky and landing in various points in the sea. Um, oh. Out to quite a range, and some of the piece you see actually what looks like part of a large flipper. Oh God! Uh, okay, crash, so definitely kill. Confirmed. Crash down into the sea, and you see some smaller <laughs> unidentifiable bits that could be parts of the dragon turtle, or they could be birds, or they could be fish. Um, you're you're not exactly sure, but there is meat falling from the sky. Oh, right. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna. gonna- if any of this was uh, evil Paulton sized meat or <laughs> really hard to tell. Um, right. I'm just, the bomb I'm just is very pretty curious thorough. if he actually lived or not. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Un- you Moving don't see it. You don't see any confirmation of Paulton's demise or the destruction of the mandolin. I think as Evelyn sees Paulton kind of like staring where the mandolin was, she like kind of tears jump to her eyes and she's like, Your, your mandolin. Yeah. Why did you do that? I had it covered. I could say the same thing. What do you mean? It was looking fine. Yeah, I had the holy symbol of Raven kind out and I was talking to him and I, I said I had it covered. Look, I'm not gonna sit here and argue who was wrong. He said, she said, it's done. They're both gone now. So that's all there is to say. Day one. I I mean, if if you think that's all there is to say, then. That's the, holy all he says. Of, the holy symbol of Ravenkind isn't gone, though, right? She didn't even get to give that to the guy. No, that's she right. still has that. Yeah. Oh, J.K. Then he's like, "Well, then look at that. You got to keep your thing. Bright side." Well, I would have rather you had your mandolin than keep this. I guess that's what I would have wanted. Well. Doesn't seem to be the case. She looks at Dieth and she's like, why didn't you think I could handle it? Uh, Dieth actually isn't able to respond as he's sat down and his back pressed up against the railing of the boat uh, and is just uh, elbows up on his knees and is just like this. Yeah, if Strix sees that, she's gonna be like, oh no, not again! <laughs> she's just gonna walk over there and just try and pull him up. Nope! Mm-mm. Just like grab his arm and be like, no, okay. no! Evelyn looks just like uncharacteristic. Like usually she's just, uh, usually she's so focused on like, what is everybody else thinking and feeling and everything? And she's just like, very, she looks like she's kind of at war with herself. Um, like she's having experiences that she doesn't understand. And so she's just kind of like looking to all of them to try to figure out what's next. Uh, can I find the captain anywhere? Cap- yeah, or, she's, or... she's ever present on the deck of the ship. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like, what do you need? What would you like? She's like shake Dieth a little bit. Like you have a spyglass. Do you have a spyglass, Captain? Yeah, Wait. she will give you, she will okay. hand you her spyglass. 
and tell, right, you, tell you that she wants it back. All right. There. Given your propensity for throwing things into the water, she, <laughs> she felt like she needed to call that out. And Strix is like, that's fair. And then she'll just shake it in front of Dia's face. Here, this is what you wanted, right? You'll stand uh, up again. Uh, he'll see it and just be like, uh, no, you look, you look, you look and you tell me. You tell me if it's okay. Oh. Halton, right. just, Halton just, like, if I can, just grab it from her. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> and then he, he's like, fine, I'll do it. He looks out for a second. They're all dead. And he just, like, throws it back at him <laughs> and then leaves. Uh, he said, he said, I saw some bread. That's not, that's what he said. They didn't say dead. <laughs> Strix will pack, pick it back up and be like, like angrily look at Malton. Evelyn then, will try to take a look. With what? I got you. I'm taking it from me. All right. What uh, does Evelyn actually see? Make a perception check. <laughs> no, oh, no. Everyone takes everything from Strix. <laughs> Uh, 15. New dice. Um, as you look at, uh, uh, peer down the mouth of the Bay of Chult back toward Part 9 Zaru, uh, with your spyglass, and it's a really good one. She's got a great spyglass. Uh, and it's even got, like, adjustable magnifications and little lenses that you can pop in and out of it, out of the tube. And as you peer through and you adjust and you focus and you look and you, you actually do find the city, which sort of fills the circular frame uh, of your view, you see uh, water and people sort of washing out of the city into the bay. Water and people? Yeah. And dinosaurs and other things. They, they look super dead? Splashing around the bay. Unclear um, at this range. Uh, you can also see that the buildings at sea level, uh, many of them don't look right. Like maybe they've been pulled off their foundations or knocked astray. We have to go back. We need a mess. We just okay. demolished that city. No, yeah. no, we didn't. <laughs> no. It's no. fine. No, no, it's fine. No. No, don't are, listen no. to her. There are people no. and Strix dinosaurs no. in the water. No. No. Can I mage hand her mouth? No. <laughs> well, it would I'm... just be, you know, hovering there. It won't actually stop anything. Uh, well, can I actual hand her mouth? <laughs> yes. Yes, you can okay. try. <laughs> um, Strix is just going to push her <laughs> away from death and be like, what? you need to lie. <laughs> Why? Because we can't go back. Why? We can't fix a demolished city. Then we shouldn't have demolished it in the first place. We didn't place. demolish it. That bomb did, and that dragon took the bomb. None of this is our fault. Mm. Bombs don't kill people. People kill. I don't. I'm not having this philosophical discussion right now. <laughs> uh, Captain Ordeme says in her her rapid fire little voice that uh, her crew can probably get the ship through this storm. Okay. But she is worried about you guys, uh, you landlubbers. Uh, she would like her crew to tie you down for the duration of the storm so that nobody gets washed overboard. Strix is like, great, do it. My favorite thing. Uh, oh, man. Evelyn is looking at, like, massive death and destruction. Yeah. And you can see, Evelyn, there is this absolutely black... Thunderhead rolling in toward you off the Sea of Swords. I, I don't think there's any way I can just leave. People need help. That's my job is to help. Especially if it's our fault. No, no, not your it fault. Was not an your accident. fault. Not your fault, just mine. No, stop this! That's no one's fault. It was an accident and it's fine. There's all the. It's, you don't even know if they're dead. They could be swimming. It's a nice day. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. Points at the storm clouds. Yeah. Beautiful day! <laughs> Evelyn's like. I, I wish I could think of a reason not to, but I, I guess, I guess I'll go alone. 
No, no one is leaving. No one's leaving. I just start tying evil into the ship. Well, whoops, <laughs> you're tied now. I don't know if you can. <laughs> Yeah, you see her pull out this rope and start untangling it in front of you, and just sort of puts a, just sort of walks around you and around like did, the mast. Did uh did Evelyn know about the? Because I know she was separated, but about like that the secret assassins that were after us when we were there. I don't think so. No. All right. Paul's just like. Hey, while we were there, there are these people that almost killed us over a mistake. So imagine what's going to happen if we go back after we just blew up their city. Well, don't we kind of deserve it in this case? We just demolished people's homes. We may have killed people because we couldn't make a decision. Look, I understand if you guys don't want to go back, but my life is forfeit to my cause, and I I can't just walk away from a dying city when people need my help, and it's, I mean... Maybe we need, it, need another voice. I'll just, like, go back to the captain and be like, we need help! <laughs> Everyone is upset! Please, captain, <laughs> tell them why we can't go back! She shakes her a little. Okay. <laughs> Shake this little gnome, Captain. Uh, yeah, she's looking like crazy. She's got like crazy eyes. <laughs> she says, if we go back there and the harbor has been destroyed, we won't have anywhere to make birth. Well, I guess I have to go alone then. You're not going alone. Can I... Oh. She just, like, kind of takes to the air and hovers over the ship. Uh, as she, like, gets up, Diaz actually reaches out and tries to uh, grab onto Evelyn. Uh, probably about, like, the forearm or maybe uh, by, like, a shin or something, depending on how close she actually is. Um, and without... He, he isn't able to actually look at her and make eye contact, but he's clearly addressing her... Um, and obviously trying to hold back tears. Uh, uh, he almost seems like, he almost seems to be like almost shaking uh, to himself a little bit. Um, just hold on to Evelyn and says, please, please don't go, please stay. Tell me what to do, tell me what to do that's right. I can't, don't, I need you right now, please guide me. You know what I think is right, which is to help those in need. But look, I mean, I did what I thought was right just now, and it didn't seem to work for you either, so. Uh, and his, his hand on her was kind of slowly lose its grip and like fall off. I'm sorry, I don't. The, the captain will say, uh, to you, Evelyn. Can you bring back the dead? Kinda. Some. Once <laughs> How in a dead while. are you talking? Depends. <laughs> How dead? <laughs> Evelyn, why don't you just send a letter to Omen? Just put it in my hat. He can help. He can help more than we can help. Oh, no. <laughs> you know that's true. Well, I mean, it couldn't hurt to have more help. What is one paladin going to do? <laughs> wow. That's not what I meant! <laughs> I'm not saying that you're not... I hate this! And she's going to turn into rats and go up down below deck. Okay, so... Why? Rats scatter throughout the ship. And Captain Ormay's like, oh, not again. <laughs> Ter terrorizes the crew. <laughs> Yeah, you for her, sure hear screams down below deck. Okay. You can see Evelyn's like, like her face is stone, but the tears are just like rolling down her cheeks. Like she's, she's not crying, but it's just, you know, coming out of her. And she's like, this is one of those moments where 
what you want isn't necessarily what's right. And you have to go with what's right. I love you guys and I hope I'll see you again. And she takes off. Well, she doesn't, she, if you say something, she'll stop. Paul's just like, hold up. It's, there's a difference between right and just trying to be self-righteous. Because at this point, I'm really getting so sick of everyone just like, no, me, no, let me do it. Let me, do, let me, do. it's like, it's like, this is, this is why every other day we borderline die. You've died. I don't even know how many times at this point. And it's just, there, there's other ways to solve problems than like, oh, let me jump into the fire. And it's, it's ridiculous. And like, we had a, we had a damn solution and it was working. You know, it's it, cause it's like, oh, it's, well, why would you do that? It's like, what, what the fuck good is a mandolin if I'm dead? You know, none. And the problem is none of you are survivors. And it's getting, it's so much. It's getting to be way too much. I'm not saying, you, you, you do what you want. You think going back is the right thing, then it's like, sure. But I think you need to figure out what your, what your definition of right actually is. I need to figure out what my definition of right is. This is too much. What, why are you even here to begin with? Because you know what? I don't know anymore. But thank you. Because that's a good something I should probably mull over. Captain Orme, uh, still standing next to you, Evelyn, uh, says, if it makes you feel any better, all the important people live tie up. <laughs> that, thank you. Oh, okay, great. That does yeah. not we make good? me feel much better, no. Um, Why don't we tie you to the mast and you can think about it some more. She, she looks at Paulton and she's like... Let's get like, through the storm first. I, I honestly have no idea what guides you or spurs you. And I've never asked you to be anything but exactly who you are. But I know who I am and that's a servant of good and of Lathander. And I know what my responsibilities are. And I know that being that person has saved me time and time again, regardless of whether my life is forfeit. And I can't in good conscience, just leave a mess behind me and save myself over and over. And I don't expect you to do the same, but why? How do you expect me to be someone other than who I am? So you want to go back. You want to get yourself killed again. If you want this to be the routine, then it's your life wasted if you want. But Tell I'm, me how well, this is going on. Albert, uh, the owlbear is just sort of sitting on its bomb on, on the and just sort of its head moving turning back and forth between the conversation <laughs> oh, no. Us. Oh, yeah. no. Simon, oh, no. Simon has already tied himself oh, no. to right. a, well, a railing. And it's just sort of sitting there, up against, waiting for the storm. Paul's just like, you know, you know, you say you do, you know, the, the greater good or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if, like, Lawful stupid is an alignment. That's what I'm getting. But you, you say you care about people, and it feels like you don't even consider what it puts them through when they have to watch you die over and over. What do you mean? It's 
It's what it means. It means what it means. You know, you say like, oh, I care about my friends and care about my... And yet you're still just like, oh, well, you know, I'll still just like, you know, go and get myself killed. And you don't think what that does, what that does to, what that does to DF, what that does to Strix, what that does to me. You think it's fun? So I don't know. In a weird way, maybe stop thinking about yourself by thinking about yourself. You actually care? Enough to where this is getting too annoying for me to deal with. And if this is going to become the routine, then, well, that's, that's a toxicity I don't want in my life. Annoying, huh? For lack of a better term, sure. Well, honestly, I just, I wasn't sure you guys actually needed me. Considering I tried my best to manage that and none of y'all seem to think that I had any of it handled. There's a bunch of rats, by the way, coming out from underneath the ship. <laughs> okay. And they're all holding little scraps of food that they've stolen from the kitchen. <laughs> just in their little hands. And they're okay. just like piling Collectively, them. it's a meal. <laughs> no, they're piling them next to Diaf. Just, just, just looks sad. Uh. They're just dropping little bits of food. They're definitely covered in rat spit. And they're listening to the whole conversation, just looking up at Evelyn and Paulton. One she, rat brings Evelyn a piece of food. And Evelyn, piece. Evelyn notices DF like basically melting and kind of looks back at Paulton and you see some recognition kind of dawning on her. And she's like, I do know what it's like to love someone who has a higher calling and it is tough. And I do know how it feels to be left behind. Strix, can I write that letter to Omen? Uh, the rats all look up at you and drop their food. And, <laughs> <laughs> and now there's food all over the deck. And they'll go alaske. But it's like 50 rats are going Bleh, at the same yes. time. So it's like yeah. a really loud. <laughs> yeah. They all move at the same time. It's horrible. <laughs> and so, and yeah, Strix will just go and yeah. pull her hat off and just like hand it to you and be like, of course we need you. Why would you ever think that we did it? And then just lie on the ground okay. and start tying mm -hmm. a rope around herself. Paulton chimes in on that. He's just like, yeah, like need you. He like points to DF. It's like, look at that. Look at that mess. He's covered and in food now. <laughs> points to Strix. It's like pretty sure she's gotten us killed more than anything. <laughs> Strix is quiet, but... Simon just sort of like, nods to that. Yeah. <laughs> Strix kind of just like, you know, that's fair. So, it's like, yeah. Yeah, you're needed. If that makes you feel better, then you're needed, because we are a mess. Like, good lord. Like, I, I look at this, and I'm just like, what the, I am still here and not dead, which at this point is impressive. As you look around to Paulton, you see that Captain Ortime, she's just sort of nodding to crew, and the crew are just sort of giving each other signals. They're doing everything in absolute coordination perfectly. Like, there's not one stray machinery in that, a stray gear in that machine. It's, it's, and we're just like, oh my, yeah. that's, that's, it's, wow. They're just, so, they're just so well oiled, so together. They, they know exactly what their roles are and what they have to do to survive. We all sit and watch and feel real dumb. <laughs> and they seem, they seem entirely focused on the problem ahead, not the problem so, behind. Uh, for the record, when the Captain Ordome said she wanted to tie us down, was that... Essentially, Outside, tie you, the... just basically secure you to the ship. 
Uh, okay. So that when the when the waves start coming, you guys aren't heaved over, thrown over, blown over by the wind or whatever other calamity can happen during a storm. So okay. basically, so, to the mast, okay. to the railings, to the stairs, whatever. There's not enough room below deck, or is it just cargo? Uh, well, there's a, there's a lot of cargo down there, but it's generally um, top side. At least you can see what's going on, oh. and you won't like drown if the lower deck floods. Oh, that's fair. Gotcha. <laughs> Strix clearly doesn't know much about ships. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just wondering. Uh, I guess Dieth will, uh, like, kind of reach out and kind of flump over and grab a rope and just really slowly and pathetically try to like tie it around him. One of the crew members will come over to you. He's sort of a, a young, youngish man with uh, floppy blonde hair and uh, he'll come over and help you um, okay. tie yourself off securely. Great. Do you have a preference as far as like being tied up to the like forecastle, aft, cast, aft uh, middle, uh, mast, oh, stairs? Um... I guess the middle-ish area. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. So yeah, I guess we should probably make a storm too, huh? Well, I guess if we're both sticking around. I know I am. Again, it's your call. Uh, maybe... Lathander did give me this family for a reason. She goes and helps tie Dieth down and then also writes a quick letter to Omen uh, saying, Dear respectable <laughs> Mr. Drawn, <laughs> <laughs> thanks again so much for that whole resurrection thing. It's really helped a lot. Uh, we had a little accident in Port Nainzaru. We would appreciate it very much if you would help the good people there. We'd owe you one. Love, yours affectionately, XOXO. This <laughs> is Evelyn Avalona Helvig Marthing. Then you have the note to Strix, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Strix will proofread it. <laughs> okay. Some of that yeah. some of that message is likely to get cut off in the sending, but uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. Isn't it on like she wrote it on paper? Yeah. Yeah. Well, she'll proofread it. Yep. And and add plus strix at the end okay. and shove it into the hat. You shove it deep, deep, deep down into the hat and then you don't feel it there anymore. Yeah. Okay. She also sends a, a cookie. Okay. I probably can. I probably can do more good with help as opposed to just running headlong into something. Then I've always had a problem with that. I suppose that's good advice. Thank you, Paulton. You can see that a couple crew members are. Uh, they've sort of laid ropes out so that you can tie waffles down. The Albear has not permitted any of the crew members to oh. um, oh. bind so her in any already, way, shape, or form. DF is already tied up. Um, yeah. Being sad, so Strix will help tie down waffles okay. with. Evelyn yep. and Paulton, if Paulton's helping. Are you helping Paulton? Sure. Paulton will, or the Paulton, uh, Waffles just sort of get down low so that you can kind of lash, put the lashes over her back and things like that. So she's sort of pinned down flat on the deck. And you throw her a little snickety snooze to keep her happy. Yeah. Yeah, she still keep throwing her things. Okay. Um, Dieth, you're probably right across from Simon, so you're just staring at him all the whole time. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> at least I he's think, not making jokes. No, that's true. I think Evelyn will tie down next to Dieth. Okay. And then kind of like grab his hand and just say really quietly, I'm sorry. Uh, Dieth will respond. And it's not entirely certain if it's even respond, uh, directed at Evelyn, but he'll say, I'm sorry, too. And then with that, kind of takes a moment to himself and actually look up 
at Paulton, uh, and, and we'll say, Paulton, I'm sorry. I, it's not that I, I wasn't listening to you. It's just I. No, I didn't listen to you. I just. The bomb was dangerous, and I wanted to get rid of it. I'm. You were right, and I should have listened. Paul replies. He goes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so with Evelyn <laughs> and Dia tied down together, uh, Strix, where do you want to be tied off to? Do I, can I use my broom? Your broom? I mean, can I just... For can a storm? I, yeah, can I just, like... You just get blown away. Is it strong enough to, like, hold me hovering in a storm around the boat to make sure everyone's okay? You don't know. Oh. Uh, but if, uh, if you ask the captain, she'll tell you that would be most unwise. All right. And Strix goes back to thinking about Paulton saying she got everyone killed. Thanks for a second. <laughs> and just walks over to get tied up. Okay. Like, tie me up. Uh, do you want to be tied up, like, near Waffles kind of daily, like to a stair staircase? Yeah, I'll get tied up near Waffles. Okay. Because every, everyone else is being so moody and upset and saying sorry to each other, and mm. no one's talking to Strix, and so she'll tie herself to the Albert. <laughs> All right, somebody will help you with that. And uh, that leaves Paulton as the only party member currently untethered. I'll, uh, if I can, I'll, I'll uh, post up next to Simon. Okay, no problem. I just like look over to Simon as I'm tied up. I'm just like, you listen to me. Oh yeah, no one healed me by the way, get, so I have two oh. hit points. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Well, <laughs> well, your healing machine's tied up now, so. Yeah, and I'm just bleeding out next to Waffles. <laughs> Everyone hates Strix! I know, if I notice that, yeah. I'll untie myself and go heal her. Okay. I'm sorry! How much healing do you have left? Strix is like, don't touch me! All of it? Uh, haven't I already healed her once? I, I, I think I, I have, think like, so. uh, yes. Because she was badly injured by the dragon turtle at the end of uh, yeah. last time's game, when she dove down to get DS key. No, you know what? When Evelyn walks, walks up, Strix is like, don't. And she heals herself. Oh. Shit. <laughs> no, she heals herself. Chris is all of us. <laughs> she just does mass cure wounds on herself. There you go. All right. Evelyn. She has, like, her hands were already glowing for lay on hands, and she's kind of looks at Strix like a little hurt. Does Strix, anybody... Strix just looks at her and says, we need you, but we need you. We don't need your powers. We don't need things that aren't you. We need you. What does she, that even mean? She says that now, Evelyn. <laughs> what? She says that now, just like. <laughs> yeah, after she's already healed herself and I already have my powers already. Yeah. After she was complaining about not being healed. Yeah. She's mad. Look, I'm sorry. Let me know if you need more. Paulson, are you okay? Yep. Diaz, you? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, I, I want to. Uh, when Evelyn actually says that to to Diaz. Yep. Uh, it, it's probably not hard for her to notice that Diaz is actually looking over at Paulton and Simon uh, and observing them interact. And there is a hint of uh, envy in Diaz's face. Paulton, are you going to tie yourself down? Yeah, he's being tied down by the crew next to Simon presently. So everybody else is secured except yeah. Evelyn. Yeah. So she, I guess she's just like, okay, and it just goes back. To when you go back is. to where you are, they'll tie you down as well, because obviously if you got yourself out of your own tying ropes, it wasn't a very good right. uh, job. So uh, you're all bound securely. Waves slam into the ship mercilessly as the sky has turned as black as night. The storm has been battering the ship for hours. And with every rise and fall, it feels like the ship is falling off a precipice. 
and at any moment as it lists back and forth could flip completely upside down or so it seems, yet never does. The bashing of the waves against the hull makes it sound like the hull is splitting apart and yet the ship holds together and uh, with each bashing seems no terribly worse for wear. Every once in a while you're jolted and alarmed by a lance of lightning that pierces the darkness and strikes down into the sea behind waves so high you can't really see over them. And uh, one of them actually strikes the mast of the ship and uh, seems to just kind of absorb into it and not damage the mast at all. What the hell's the ship made out of? And we'll ask that later. Yeah. <laughs> you try to, you, you, you might even say that to yourself and then just sort of get a mouthful of seawater. <laughs> 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 yes. But the water washes over the ship all of the time, and the, the, the conditions have gotten so bad that Captain Ortome, at some point during the storm, basically ordered most of her crew tied down as well, except for herself. And so she alone seems to be guiding the ship over waves. Uh, she has tethered herself, or rather, hooked herself to the wheel of the ship. You can't see her very clearly up there because she's a small figure, but you do see the wheel turning uh, every once in a while, and then the waves just wash over, and you think, oh my god, she's gone. She's gone, and yet the wheel continues to turn, um, attesting to the fact that she's probably still up there. The rest of the crew is just as soaked as you as the waves slam above the deck, Waffles is just drenched, and every time the waves sort of flow over her, she's like, Wah! <laughs> oh, Strix is gonna uh, sing, oh. sing Barovian songs to her from back when they were they were alone. Okay. She's just gonna like pet her and sing songs. It's like, Doo! it's like hearing yeah. these weird, creepy songs coming from yeah. both. Of them. Occasionally, water comes up from below and just sort of boils up out of the hold and splashes around you and pours off the deck of the ship. The creaking, crashing, creaking, crashing. Uh, I'd like you all to make perception checks. Go. All right. Got 18. Hell yeah. Also 18. Excellent. 29. Evelyn? You're muted. I was muted. I got a 19. Okay. Yay. And I'm sorry, Strix, what did you say you got? Oh, 18. Okay. You all see at one point as a, after a wave crashes over and your ship uh, leans precariously forward that you are surrounded by some jagged peaks of rock that, uh, that are thrusting up out of the sea and somehow miraculously haven't struck one of them. But on one of the rocks, clinging to it, you see an immense, maybe 26 to 30 foot tall being. Uh, a woman with purple skin and uh, green kelp-like hair clinging to the top of the and uh, casting some sort of spell. And... Um, you've never seen a giant like this before. This is fine. Can I counterspell that? Me too. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, does so, it seem like the, the, sh the crew happens to notice let this? Let me just check or? to make sure that counterspell doesn't have any somatic components. Um, actually, if Strix sees it, she'll make eye contact with Paulton and like kind of like oh, nod sorry. It. it requires somatic components and you guys are tied up. Oh, no. Could I misty step out of the ropes and you do could, it? You could, yes, but then you'll, of course, be untethered. Yep. Yeah, it would. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you, you uh, misty step? Yeah. Okay, how far away from your current position do you misty step? Um, uh, pretty close, because I want to hold on to the ropes still. So just pretty much just outside of the ropes. Okay. Boof. You appear on the deck as it careens around and are able to cast your spell. Anybody else doing anything? Does it seem like the crew can tell that uh, this thing is here? Uh, not that you can see. 
they seem to have no awareness. You're the only one that's perceptive enough to have seen it. All right. Uh, I would like to calmly point that out. Okay. And, and by calmly, I, I mean, it's like, panic, throw the rocks, oh, God! <laughs> and, like, pointing that direction. Okay. Uh, trying to get the attention of Captain Otome okay. specifically so she can help steer the ship. They don't hear you. The, the wind, the crashing sea, everything else just completely drowns out your voice. In fact, you, oh, you, heck. you can hardly even hear yourself. Uh, anybody else going to do anything before I resolve the Strix counterspell? Um, does... Okay, so I'm tied up. Does animate object... I'm trying to look it up. I'm trying to see if that requires any kind of movement. Well, but, oh, I just tore my book. That's not happy. It does. Ah, well. You can dimension door? Um, let's see mm. if it has somatic components. Oh, no. Dimension door. Does not. It's verbal only. Okay. I'm gonna... I'm gonna dimension door like out of the ropes, mm -hmm. but like right next to where Strix is and like also hang on. Okay. All right, so you are both out of the ropes. Evelyn, you can hear Diath saying something, but you can't make out what it is. You can see Strix vanish out of her ropes and Paulton Dimension Door out of his. And obviously they're gonna, looks like they're gonna deal with the giant. Does the need for... Wait, so verbal components work? Yes, if you have a, it's only the uh, somatic components and material components you can't really access when you're tied up. So I could summon Morning Glory. Is that just verbal? I guess, well, no, actually, hold on. Why? Because <laughs> horse. We need a horse. <laughs> well, that, she can that, get someone's attention. Uh, is that the fine steed? Spell? Yeah. That, that requires somatic components as well. So yeah. No. Well, poo. Okay. Evelyn just got a big lecture about not jumping into things so she's trying <laughs> to think about it. Am I... Okay, so I went over to Strix. Was Strix, like, close enough to Evelyn and DF to where I could, like, yell at least so they could hear me? Or is it, like, pretty far off? Uh, they're not far at all. But when you... Even when you yell, they can't hear you. There's uh, just so much rain and wind and so stuff. So much rain, wind, wind, and other things. The crashing of the waves the roar of the thunder. Okay. I think Evelyn is doing the thing where she's like about to get up and then remembers that she's not supposed to jump into things anymore and is just kind of like, uh, like he, just can, a moment of indecision. Can she, can she like see us though? Yeah, like, totally. Okay. Yes. I, I like see her about to do something and I just gesture like, <laughs> 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 All right, uh, Strix, do your so your counter spell. This yes. is, what the Same. what the giant is doing is a higher level spell than. Th well, actually, I, I'm getting this confused with the spell magic. I do this all the time. All right, um, you attempt to dispel the creature. It is casting a spell higher than third level, right. so you have to make a check using your spell casting ability. Got it. I would also like to do that. Okay, please do. So I have to, so it's just rolling a d20 and adding yep. my spell attack bonus? Your, your spell casting ability, which is oh, for okay, you, my modifier. charisma. It. Yeah. So it's four, okay, cool. So it's d20 plus four. Cool. And for, okay. for you, it would be charisma based as well, Paulton. Okay. So I got a dirty 20. Okay. I got a, I got a natural 20. What? Oh, shit. All right. Uh, well, here's, here's the thing. As you guys are standing up and looking around, you see there's actually more than one giant. There's one on the oh, other side of the yeah. ship as well, also casting a spell. Cool. Can I use mine on the other one? You sure can. Cool. <laughs> you see both of their spells peter out and just poof, go poof. Uh, the light and magic from them uh, effectively counterspelled. And now I'd like both of you, as, a, as the ship uh, careens and a wave crashes over, to make dexterity saving throws, please. I was just going to high-five Paulton. Yeah, you're about to high-five him and then splash. <laughs> I was going to just let me, let me see if I... I was going to high-five you. Oh, God. Um, 16. Okay. Uh, <laughs> dexterity saving throw. Strikes. It's a three. 
Okay. Um, oh, wait, wait. Are they close enough to me? Uh, that they get the three within, your, within the aura. Three. Yes, they would get your aura bonus to their saving throws, which is six, I think. Okay. Uh, double check. No, five, five, five. Okay, so that's an eight. So that it's would put so Paulton up to a twenty-one, which is Paulton. As that wave slams into you, you are blasted back by it and kind of thrown against the ship. Uh, but you find purchase easily enough. And as you wipe, as, as you flick your hair out of your face and the water gushes past you and you look around, Strix is gone. <laughs> okay. Um, can I... You heard, whoops! <laughs> <laughs> can I... Okay, so it's like loud and it's like hard to see and that, like yes. everything's... Hor- okay, and, yeah. I would like to use Locate Creature and I want to see... Would that work? Would I be able to use that? So yeah, you're not con- you're not constrained at this point in time. I'm just gonna right. see how what the casting time of the spell is. Oh no! Uh, it, okay, the casting time for Loki creature is only one action, so that's not so bad. Okay. Um, so yes, you can sense the direction to the creature's location as long as that creature is within one thousand feet of you. And uh, okay, let me see what else. Boom, 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 boom. That's about the long and short of it. So yes, you can cast that spell. Evelyn is like. Now? Now do I? Now? All right, uh, Strix, you are pulled down into the briny depths. All right. While I'm down there, can I cast Alter Self so that I can breathe underwater? Let me see. Boom, 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 boom. If there's any reason you can't. Uh, it is... Uh, verbal, somatic, so there are no material components you have to dig out. That's kind of nice. Yeah. Um... Yes, you can. All right, sweet. I have gills now. You have no bear. It's completely dark down there. With your dark vision, however, you can see the ship is going through some sort of rocky passage with rocks rising up on either side of it. Um, All right. Did I, did I know where she is? Yes. She is about uh, 500 feet behind and below you. <sighs> Okay. Oh. All right. Yeah, I look to evil. I'm just like, yep. Now, yep. Immediately, <laughs> 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 flying off in the direction that Strix went. Uh, and well, that, you, can I, Diev actually react to use his sword to cut Evelyn's rope to untether her? Uh, you can't get at your sword. Ah, dang. Tied okay. up. And Evelyn, you're just trying to break out of your ropes? Is that what you're doing? And I can't just and untie myself? No. You're so right, strong. Then, yeah, I'm yeah. going to try to just hook it. Boom. <laughs> okay. Make a, uh, make a super duper strength check. 20. Yes. <laughs> I just hulk out of your <laughs> Just like, now? <laughs> so, yeah, you're, yeah. You're, trying to, you're trying to reach <laughs> in that awkward place to get your sword, and then you just see her tear herself free. Of these. Yeah, she's just like, now, now, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, so then she just goes streaking off in the direction. Did did she perceive at least the direction that Strix got swept off? Well, I can, can I also, like, can I tell her? Can she get close enough to me and then I can tell her, like, where I sense she was? Yeah, I guess Evelyn would be like, where, where? Yeah, you have no bearing, Evelyn, without Paulton. Actually, there is like a Geiger counter, kind of, you would have to... Like he, he can point, but the fat lot of good is the ship is moving around so much and the sea is churning so much, wherever he points to is not going to be accurate. Cool. Um, right. If I, I can't see the ship, but can I dimension door somewhere? You can dimension your door onto a rock. Uh, never mind. I'll just swim up to the top. Okay, that's, all, that's impossible. Um, I oh! summon morning glory. Yeah. Y- yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just so you you summon your mount, which just takes an action, right? Yeah. And uh, it appear it's a it's just a horse, right? With with the wing little wings. Well, I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, <laughs> a, a horse with little tiny uh, patterns on its skin, shaped like wings, appears on the deck of the ship. I ask her, "Can you swim?" <laughs> <laughs> The horse gives you a strange look, and then uh, there is a uh, crunching noise as the ship slams up against the rocks, and I would like 
Evelyn and Paulton to make dexterity saving throws, and I'll make one for the speed. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Why can't Dieth make dexterity saving throws? He's good at them. You're He's, safe. You're tied up. Safe. Yeah. Only physically. Uh, is there an aura going on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Both of us get uh, five plus. Okay. okay. So that means 17. Okay. And what's your own? Nine. Okay. You're all swept off the ship. Cool. And actually, I need to roll some damage. Um, Need? I do. <laughs> Maybe the or choosing to was that we should have just stayed tied up. Oh no! <laughs> this don't be good. Oh my god! Not her dear. Oh my god! It's so amazingly low. <laughs> I can't okay. believe how weak this storm is. Uh, you each take forty-three points of damage. <laughs> Uh, as you are thrown off uh, and go tumbling over rocks and down into the, the water uh, in this stormy sea. Ow. Uh, and you can all, uh, some splinters of the ship also sort of peel off and fall around you. And uh, the storm, uh, Evelyn, you find yourself basically on a rock. No sign of your horse anywhere, no sign of Paulton. And you can see about. 200 feet away, up on another rock, is one of those giants you saw earlier. Uh, ah! A flash of lightning sort of comes down um, behind it, just sort of illuminating her briefly. And then uh, you see her come down off that rock and dive into the water toward you. Well, that's nice. Um, can I use locate object on Strix's staff. Yes. Um, what is the casting time on locate object? Uh, one one action. action. Yes, you totally can. Uh, Paulton, you are down in the water, basically being churned around like you're in a giant cauldron, smashed cool. about, floundering around. Um, Strix, you too are very much at the mercy of this tumultuous sea, unable to swim anywhere, unable to guide yourself anywhere with your hands and legs. But I can breathe. You can breathe. Uh, Paulton, how are you going to deal with the, the drowning? I don't know. Okay, fair question, fair answer. Um, uh, okay. There, it seems like swimming would be futile. The current in the churn is too great. Okay. Um, I'm guessing I can't make a hut that would have air in it, huh? Uh, let me check <laughs> the spell. I'll, we all get water beds. Uh, because uh, it does not, it will not hedge out the water. Okay, cool. Oh, no, wait. Oh. There is a throwaway line here which says, and it's a little vague, the atmosphere inside the space is comfortable and dry regardless cool. of the weather outside. <laughs> Chris, can, I, can I make a hut? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You now have Paulton's underwater hut. Um, and the other thing is, it's a mobile, so it, you, <laughs> you just sort of create it, and now you're sort of suspended in this swirling maelstrom all around you. It's like, oh my all right, got eight hours to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, boy. Okay. Um, Actually, no, ideally, he, like, he casts it, and mm -hmm. it happens, and he looks around, and he says, as he just like... Oh, oh, wait, hold on. It, oh. takes, it takes one minute to cast. Can I take, so, try to take the yes, minute? Yes, you can. Um, well, but, you can hold your but breath I, for a minute. I check out the uh, suffocation rules to see how long you can hold your breath. This is so mean! <laughs> this is so sad. Can we? <laughs> we, just, we just had an argument and now we're dying again. Hang on. Meanwhile, Dieth uh, tied down on the ship just sees all of his friends go overboard. Yes, exactly. Hmm. Oh, no. Who knows? Oh, okay. I was being good. I was just staying tied up like you told me. Yeah. I, I'm also going to cast Green Flame Blade onto my staff. 
So I, I just want them. I just want my glowing staff. Like I want people to them to see. Like we're all actually, yeah. The staff, whole staff is glowing as bright as yep. I can get it to glow. What is your constitution modifier, Carlton? Uh, two. Okay. So you start casting the spell as you are being whipped around underwater. I'll let you know how that goes momentarily. Um, Great boy. I, I look forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Diaf, you see after that latest slam by the ship that the captain's wheel is just spinning. Where's the captain? You don't know. Um, but as you watch, that sort of blonde-haired, floppy-haired uh, kid has somehow wrangled out of his ropes and is clawing his way across the railing to get up to the wheel. Why don't we just die? I'm just guess I'll die. Game's over. <laughs> uh, does he look like he's gonna make it? Unclear. Things are looking pretty bleak. How hilarious would it be if those giants were actually like trying to <laughs> stop the storm? <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be, like funny, haha. You mean like hilarious? Mm -hmm. Sure. All right, Strix. Uh, uh, yeah. Did I see yeah. him strong? The, the the giants strong enough to recognize them as a storm giants or something? They would. I they seen would. Before? Uh, you would guess, venture to guess, based on stories that they are storm giants. Cool. Well, <clears throat> I'll let you make a. Um, since you you brought that up, I'll let you make a. Let's call it um, intelligence. Mm, history check. Something history. we're deeply lacking right now. Yeah. Uh, I got some points in that. Yeah. Uh, 12? Okay. Um, <laughs> your, your sort of historical lore, historical remembrances about what storm giants are is pretty vague. You, you can't. Other than the fact that, hey, they live in the deep sea, and hey, they're big, and hey, they're like among the most powerful of giant kind. Right. Do I remember if they're generally dicks or not? Or you don't know. Okay. Well, that's fine. <sighs> I wiggle free of the rope. Make a acrobatics. Like I know they tied me down, and they're like yeah. sailors and stuff. But this this is just sad tying. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you. So so sad. I rolled a natural twenty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, they actually did a formidable job of tying you to the ship, but it avails them not as you slip out of your bonds easily. Uh, and then I'm going to start making my uh, way to that wheel. Yeah, you're sort of clawing your way up the opposite side of the ship as the young man. Um, and uh, just roll, uh, roll initiative to see whether yeah. you or he gets there first. Uh, and I, I guess, I don't know if it really applies to this, but I can cunning action dash for more movement speed and oh, or use second story work as a sort of climb. Yeah along the railing for even faster oh, speed. Oh, absolutely, yes. Okay, Oops. roll your initiative. Uh, initiative 19. Okay, you are definitely going to get ahead of him. Uh, you can claw your way all the way up to the ship. You see that the tether cord that the captain had has broken. The captain's gone. You don't see her at cool. all. And the wheel is spinning around, but you get to the wheel and can try to stop it if you want to, or steer it. Um, uh, I mean, yeah, because it's just spinning, so yeah. the whole... The whole the rudders is making the whole thing like yes. lose itself. And you can feel the ship just sort of careening as a consequence over this wave. Yeah. Uh, I got fast hands, so I'll just okay. try to quickly uh, catch it and whatever you, strength I have, yeah. start make a it strength back. check to guide the ship. Uh, would you allow athletics? Yes. Okay. Because that's one better for me. <laughs> oh, all right, friendship dice. Uh, 10. You were able to sort of stop the wheel from turning, but you can't actually turn it the way you want to go. Okay, um, I got hold of it at least, though. That's yes, something. Yes, you got a hold of it. And uh, you see the young man making his way up against the, the wind. Um, he's shouting something at you, but you can't hear what he's shouting. God damn it. And okay. <laughs> uh, as that happens, you both, he and you, have to make a dexterity saving throw. Mm hmm There's another wave. Threatens to sweep you off the vessel. 22. Okay, you hold on. The wave crashes 
uh, when it passes, you are still holding the wheel fast. You do not see the young man. Oh, God. I hope you didn't have to tell me anything important. <laughs> <laughs> the code <word> is... <laughs> 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 All right, uh, so uh, you shake off the water, and yeah, you're, uh, you're alone up there on the wheel. Strix, uh, you've lit your staff. What else do you want to do as you're um, swirling around helplessly? So I can't, can I tell where up is? No. No. All right. <laughs> 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 Okie dokie. Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead just, just to be safe, and I'm just going to death ward myself. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Just, just as a precaution. Okay, and that's a uh, one action casting time. Yes. Okay. So I'm just like, well, if this is how this happens, I can't help any everyone if I'm dead. But you just right. hear. <laughs> okay, your the light of your staff after you cast the spell illuminates a giant face that comes up to you underwater, and you don't see it till it's like five feet away from you, and it is a male storm giant lit green by your staff. Can I wave? Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, when you do, he waves back. Oh! And then tries to grab you with his well, other if he hand. Waves, if he waves back, I'll let him grab me. Okay, he does, but he does it gently. Oh, and then oh. you see him start to sort of swim off with you. Possi I mean, possibly up. At this point, I got no, I, I'm just like, this is where I live now, so I'm just going to let him do it. Okay. Uh, Evelyn, yeah. you saw that uh, female giant dive down into the water toward you. Uh -huh. uh, I had cast Locate Object on Strix's staff. Yes, and you got a bearing on it. It's quite a way underwater, deep underwater, and it seems to be getting closer. Okay. And do I see anyone else, or the boat, or like Paulton's hut, or anything? The boat disappeared over a wave and is gone. Cool. Um, and uh, you can see bits of the ship that have crashed upon the rocks uh, left behind, uh, uh, but not enough to suggest that the to you that the ship like was destroyed. Uh, that's uh, you can make a perception check. To see if you notice anything else. Oh, four. Okay. Rain is battering you. Uh, it's blinding. The wind is howling. Just for a moment, she can't even help herself, but to be like, oh, the rain on my face goes so nice. <laughs> I mean, no, no. Yeah. Uh, and then she goes flying for the bearing she has on Strix. Okay. Uh, as you are flying, you realize that the ocean is so tumultuous that unless you're really, really high, you're still subject to being slammed by waves. So do you want to get above that, or do you want to try to move through, thread the waves, and stay as close to the water to as possible? Through. OK. In that case, I'll just have you make uh, a wisdom insight check. You're sort of trying to predict the currents around you and avoid getting swallowed up. And it's a check, not a saving throw. Correct. 11. Okay. Uh, you miscalculate and are quickly engulfed in the water. Oops. And immediately you're sort of spun around, upside down, topsy-turvy, all around, and you've lost all sense of direction. Okay. Um, cool. <laughs> Neat. Yep. <laughs> you, see a, you see a drowning horse go by. <laughs> 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 Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, Paulton. Yes? You're suspended there. <laughs> uh, you see a large hand, <laughs> a purple hand, come up and sort of plant itself on the outside of the shell. Uh, and you're just staring at this boom, <laughs> big hand there. And then you see this giant visage, uh, barely visible in the dark gloom. I would like to 
<laughs> cast fairy fire okay. so I can maybe get a better look at what I'm dealing with. Okay. Even though this sounds horrifying. Let's see, which is... Good. Tiny Hut does not require concentration, so that doesn't go away. Mm. Uh, I think it's a dexterity saving throw. Mm -hmm. It says spells and magical effects can't extend through the dome or be cast through it. Which is why I'm not actually casting Fairy Fire, because that would be <laughs> foolish. <laughs> All right. I stare at the... Okay. Actually, well, question. Yeah. Did... Uh, when I went over, did any of the wine fastened to me make it with me? Oh, yeah. I yeah that, that, is, that is secured more than, you know, you were. This hand hits, <laughs> this hand hits the heart. I'm just like... <laughs> I'm going to die here. Yeah. <laughs> and you see sort of this other hand grab the sphere, and there's like a concerted effort to try to move it, but it won't budge. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. All right, and uh, let's see. Nope, nope. Uh, Strix, you are brought to the surface of a wave. <laughs> uh, just sort of held up above the waves by this giant's hand. She got a bath, everyone. I hope you're happy. Yeah, and then the giant <laughs> sort of pulls itself up onto a rock that is not currently engulfed with water. All right. Can I see any of the ship or my friends or anyone? Uh, make a perception check. Oh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Seven. Uh, all right. Well, I'm still, I'm just going to hold my staff up and just wave it, hoping they'll see it. Okay. Uh, DF, make a perception check. Okay. Oh. Eighteen? Uh, okay. Uh, way behind you, um, as you're sort of cresting a wave and the storm is uh, threatening you, you do see a green little glow. Yeah, familiar green. Yeah. And it's Great. sort of waving around in the air. That's awesome news. But you can't, like, turn the wheel. <laughs> to bring the ship around that direction. Would it, be, would it be faster at this point to just let it keep turning? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> potentially. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, just make a... Uh, Intelligence, just a raw intelligence check, since seamanship is not. Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know anything about this. Uh, five. Okay, yeah, you're, you're not going in the direction you want to go. Okay. You don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I'm turning to wheel. I don't understand. <laughs> uh, Paulton, this giant face, or he's gone. Never mind. Um, uh, Evelyn, uh, yeah. make a perception check to try to get your bearings. A 19. All right. And your con is high enough. I'm not going to worry about you drowning for the foreseeable future. Cool. Uh, so you think, yes, you, you've, you figured out which way is up, or you think you know which way is up, and you start to swim that direction. You do actually, you can break the surface with your flying boots. <gasps> cool. And you see a green light. Mm. I go toward it. in the distance. Yes, and that would seem to indicate where Strix is. Uh, and the giant will say to you, Strix, in, well, let me just make sure. <laughs> pretty yeah, pretty sure we're good here. Don't speak giant, but. Uh, says to you in common, if you would like oh, to be returned to your ship. Uh, and I'll say, uh, I'll like look up, like, oh! Yeah. yeah. I have friends that are also in the water. Can, can you? If they fell, I don't know what they fell, actually, but they probably did, knowing our track record. So maybe can you help put all of us back on our ship? Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, she tells you that she'll do what she can, and uh, they were trying to um, help you, she says, okay. but their magic failed them for unknown reasons. <laughs> Strix just looks really just like blinks like that gif of that guy just like just blinks for a couple minutes and yeah. just is like oh, oh that's weird it's been a bad it's been a bad couple of days so we huh. appreciate the help 
In a bad couple of days. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, she will t uh, sort of swim uh, out into the water with you. Uh, she just tells you to hold on, basically. And Whee! Evelyn, you can see Strix basically got this storm giantess by the hair. I'm uh, like Titanicking on the yeah. top. <laughs> as, as it's swimming in your direction. And the storm giant seems to be managing the, the, the tumultuous waves well enough. Okay. You can uh, tell she's having a good time. Whee! <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess if I perceive that Strix seems to be fine, yeah. I'm you see, turn... they, they go up and down over the waves and disappear from view periodically. But your spell lets you keep an eye on where they are, <laughs> and the light from her staff continues to glow every time it comes above the waves. Cool. Glad she's having fun with water sports. <laughs> we. Uh, I'm then Evelyn's going to turn her attention to trying to uh, make sure the rest of the party is safe. Okay. So can I just per perception check to see if I see anyone else? Uh, I can have you make a perception check to see if you can see the ship. You won't see anybody else who's underwater necessarily. Well, actually, no, that's not true. Go ahead and make a roll. I lied. 16. Yeah, you, you actually, with that roll, can see some distance away, surfacing on the water, uh, basically staying afloat on a piece of the ship, is a, a crew member that you last saw on the deck of the vessel. Um, a blonde-haired kid. Okay. She was looking for Paulton or Diaz, but yeah. things being what they are, I suppose she goes and... I mean, he's floating. Does he seem secure? No. She goes and helps him. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you make your way over to him, uh, I'm just going to have you make another dexterity saving throw. Oh, uh, nine. Okay, you are struck by lightning. Oh, wait, wait, I get my aura, uh, 12. Okay, yes. A lightning bolt from the sky. Uh, basically, you and your armor are serving as this <laughs> uh, giant conductor, and it actually hits you. Cool. Uh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. How's that feel? That feels like... It sounds like a lot of dice. Uh, it sounds like 72 points of damage. I'm sorry? <laughs> Allow me to do some math really quick. Hold okay. on. Uh, wait, let's see. What did I have? Let's see. And <laughs> Diaf, as you're trying to turn the ship, you see this lightning stroke <laughs> come down and sort of uh, hit something above the water. Uh-huh. You're not sure what it was. Cool. You want to know what's funny? What's that? That that gets no. me to exactly zero. Oh, no. Ah! <laughs> Come on, Chris Perkins. <laughs> Paulton just told me not to die anymore. <laughs> Sploosh. <laughs> All right, Evelyn sinks down into the briny depths. Kill the giant to save everyone. I'm on my way. Yes. Uh, DF, make another uh, intelligence check. To guide the ship. I'm busting out the friendship dice. Uh, to save friendship. Twelve. Okay. You are, through force of will, able to, or luck or something, your, your, your intellect... Pure helps, ingenuity. Pure ingenuity allows you to steer the ship back toward this glowing intermittent green light that you see. Uh, and a, you, you almost run it over, but a there's a... When you see Strix, you don't, at first it looks like she's like on a bed of kelp or something and just kind of floating there and hanging on for dear life. And it's only when this arm comes up and grabs the side of the ship that oh, you realize heck. she is in the clutches of or holding on to a storm giantess. Oh no! It's, I'll have Strix uh, with prestidigitation since they can't hear her. Yeah. Above her head in writing, it just says, they're nice! <laughs> So yeah, this sort of sparky writing appears in the air. <laughs> really like jagged. It just says like, they're nice. One of the E's are backwards. <laughs> Dieth looks at it and kind of gets confused for a moment, which makes him like lose focus on holding 
the yeah. wheel. So he just looks at it, just kind of goes, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Right, yes. And yeah, I'd like you to make another dexterity saving throw to hang on as another wave crashes over the ship. <laughs> oh, come on, Dice, work with me. As funny as it would be, just for Strix to say, they're nice! Boom! <laughs> <laughs> and Diaz is just gone. <laughs> uh, nope, 29. Yeah, you're good. Okay. All right. Uh, the giant is sort of helping you, Strix, back onto the ship. Oh, that's nice. Do I get her name? Or uh, is there just giant lady? Right now, just giant lady. Uh, yeah, priorities. Giant lady. I wanted to feel important. Yeah. Giant lady! <laughs> She just points back at Giant Lady and says, Thank you, Giant Lady. Please get my other friends. It seems to be, and she'll look around. She says uh, she will try, and then immediately, after putting, leaving you on the deck of the ship, dives down under the water. All right, that's good. Uh, can Strix help Dieth with the wheel? Like, assist with that? Yeah, I'd like you to make, as you make your way across the wind-racked deck, just make another dexterity saving throw, Strix. Okay. Since you are untethered. I swear to God. Uh, that's a nine. Okay, yeah. So she's trying to come over to you, DF, and then the ship lists, and she just sort of slides and goes over the opposite edge. Whoops. Cool. <laughs> you just hear the whoops again. <laughs> what, what was this episode supposed to be? <laughs> Not, this. Suppo- Not this. Not this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know that gif of uh, the, the crashing wave of feels? Yes. It's, that's, it's, 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 uh, all right. Uh, multiple meanings here. Couldn't I have grabbed a rope? Can I at least just like have a rope? I would have grabbed a rope. When... That that would have been a successful dexterity saving throw to grab something. Um, you rolled a nine, so Chris is like, yeah, we'll have yeah. a real role playing at the episode, and then we're like, uh, what about <laughs> if we all get swept off of a boat in the middle of a storm? So yes, you're, you're, there's like loose rope from where some of your old friend, friends untied themselves. You try to grab onto Diaz's old ropes and hang on, Strix. But the rope is long and loose, and you just sort of fall in the water, and then it gets yanked out of your grasp by the tide. You just hear Strix yell, I'll be right back! Yeah, she's gone. Uh, Yeah, you're pretty sure you might have run her over. (laughs) No! (laughs) (laughs) Paulton, that giant leaves you, um, thwarted by its effort to try to move your magical hut, disappears into the darkness of the sea. Do I get the feeling he was trying to help? Make an insight check. That's a nat 20. Yes. What the heck, Nate? Uh, but, okay. Um, um, I, did he quickly leave, or no. is he still maybe he, in range? He's to still, he's fire? still, like, yeah. Could I, like, okay, dispel the the hut and cast fairy fire. As soon as you do, the waves just sort of crash inward against you and you're kind of <laughs> cast spell. Um, yeah, I will uh, I will. I would like that. to light both me and him in hopes he'll Okay, walk. yes, you are both lit and when he turns toward you, he, he just sort of comes and you're, all, you're almost dragged away from him immediately. You've just suddenly pulled back by the current, but then you see him sort of thrust forward with both hands and grab hold of you. Gently. Uh, be gentle. He is, and uh, he bears you up to the surface. Nice. And uh, he sort of holds you up with one hand, and then he kind of dunks down a little bit. And pulls Strix up out of the water. Oh, good. Uh, we're missing uh, one. Cool and good, you know. Yeah. You know. Maybe a, a halfling as well. A super badass halfling would be also supposed to be good. Yeah. One. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, uh, then he will bear both uh, Strix and Paulton back toward the ship. Strix, okay. you were Strix, you were grabbed. Um, Holly, uh, you have been grabbed okay. by a male storm giant. Hi. Who has Paulton in his other oh. grasp, and he's just hey. so, he's just sort hey, of messed up. he's just sort yeah, of treading did. water right now. Yeah, we messed up. Okay. Do you guys just want to give up and maybe just retire? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Been trying to go home for a while now, yeah. Um, he is going to attempt to 
Oh, we can only do it one of you. Nah. I won't do that then. Oh, he is going to cast Water Breathing on both of you as a precaution. Well, that's nice. So you've already got it on you effectively, Holly, but he doesn't know that. Yeah. Paul, and you now can breathe water, and as the water is, washes over you, you know that. Is this an alarming feeling? Like, little bit. oh my god, I shouldn't be able to do this. Right, yeah. Yes. Like, mm -hmm. Uh... Yeah, and then the other, the giantess comes over and sort of uh, takes you up again, Strix, and the two giants bear each of you, swimming while holding on to you back toward the ship. Uh, DF, make a perception check. All right. Uh, 29. At this point in time, you've hit upon the idea that if you just sort of let the ship do circles, you're not going to get very far away from your friends, and so you've kind of locked the wheel into this motion, and the ship is just kind of coursing up and down waves, but kind of making a lazy circle. Yes, and as that happens, you can see these two storm giants in the water, bringing your two of your friends closer to you. Awesome. Uh, I guess whatever way I can, uh, try to adjust the ship's cor course so that it'll turn in such a way that I think Judging by how fast they're swimming towards me, mm -hmm. uh, like as they're coming up, I can make sure the ship starts making yeah, their way move. right around towards them to kind of. They swim faster than a person can run, so they. Yeah. Yeah, just trying to just trying to make it so that the the, the giant swimming in the ship can meet. At yeah. A, at a spot, and I'm just trying okay. to control that as best I can. Yes, uh, you're not able to keep the ship in a fixed location. Certainly not without like dropping anchor or something like right, that. Right. Right. So you are moving around, but sort of at the mercy of the storm, but. Uh, you do get close enough to them that they can grab hold of the ship. And as they get close, they kind of levitate upward uh, to deposit your friends on the vessel. Evelyn, you awaken. You have 10 hit points. And uh, you awaken to find that you have just been kissed on the lips by a mermaid. Oh! <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Things are looking up now. Yes. What, what kind of? You please see, describe the mermaid. You, you see, <laughs> you, oh, gosh. You see this this uh, beautiful uh, sort of uh, naked, bare arms and shoulders uh, woman with a fish-like lower body. Uh, her hair. Um, black and dark, but her eyes a sparkling green, like jade. Man, Evelyn's first kiss is being human again, and it's a mermaid. She, <laughs> she's wearing <laughs> coral. She's wearing some coral jewelry, and you can see, uh, sort of sidling up underneath you, is her giant seahorse companion. This kiss is so good; it's literally giving me life. Yeah. <laughs> and, and yes, you, Evelyn's magical adventures. It is, it, it is a healing kiss, uh, and you feel re instantly sort of rejuvenated. And then, when this beautiful, absolutely magnificent pink and violet seahorse comes up underneath you and sweeps you up, and you see it's got a uh, place you can sort of reins, it bears you quickly, and she sort of swims along beside it. And they course through the waves in a fanciful manner to suggest that they actually enjoy it. Evelyn looks up at Lathander and goes, "Thank you." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you, as uh, you're sort of, uh, you break the surface, um, uh, they seem to be bearing you toward the ship as well, which is just careening around the sea in an absolutely crazy sort of manner. But and they, it's too too loud for me to like say anything, right? Yeah, you can't hear your own voice barely. But she your horse stares. is close enough that you could probably talk to the horse, the seahorse. I don't think she needs to talk to the okay. seahorse. I do, think she can't really find her voice yeah. either. I think this is all very overwhelming for yeah. her. While this is going on, you realize this mermaid isn't alone. There are actually two mermen, a swimming escort, uh, these handsome creatures uh, following alongside you. This is all very cool with Evelyn. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, Paulton and Strix and DF, you are, on, you are unsecured on the ship, and the storm is still trying to bash you. At that Meanwhile, point, where things are horrible. <laughs> <laughs> at that point in time, you see that the giants are again trying to cast spells. And they tell you in their booming voices, which you can hear, 
that they are going to try to calm the weather around the ship. <laughs> Strix just like sticks her hands like in her robes, just very like sadly. Like <laughs> would because of this, would uh, would they would I consider them an ally at this point? If they're if you believe what they're saying, yes. But they tell, uh, you, they tell you that they are going to try to stay close to your ship, but that this spell has a casting time of 10 minutes. Okay. I got this! So they, they tell you to secure yourselves. Okay. I was going to say, could they maybe use some inspiration? Oh. Um, do, 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 do. I don't know. I just want to help at this point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they say. Um, but they, uh, they kind of look at each other dubiously. It's like, all right, cool. <laughs> I would like to use bardic inspiration. Okay. Gi- giants like bagpipes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. You, you know what you can that. always hear through storms? Uh, bagpipes. <laughs> what are you doing while he's providing inspiration, <laughs> Strix? What's that? What, what is Strix doing while Paulton is? Uh, are you singing or are you playing an instrument? Bagpipes. Bagpipes. I need to all right, cut yes. Through. Bagpipes on the high seas. Strix, what so, are you doing while he's blaring? Uh, are the they head? still holding Strix? No. Oh, is she back on the ship? Yeah, they have to. They need their hands free to cast the spell, so they deposit you on the ship. Okay. Um, then I'll just, if I can, I'll just try and grab some rope and okay. start tying off uh, Diaz and myself. Okay. Just as best as I can, which is not great, but she's just kind of like panicking and just being like, <laughs> they're tying the rope now. <laughs> they were nice the whole time. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can see that one of the male mermen, uh, Evelyn, has uh, fetched the blonde-haired kid out of the water and is sort of carrying okay. it. And you can see the, he's un- the kid is unconscious uh, and is just sort of being pulled along um, by the merman. Uh, but you do get to the ship. Uh, and you do see some stray rope lines hanging off the edges of the ship where you and your companions had undone themselves. But they're still sort of sort of fastened partly around the ship, so you could grab one of those rope lines if you wanted, or you could just fly up at this point. Does it, do the mermaids look like they're like that was their goal? They don't want to like take me with them. Uh, you don't. You're not sure they have the capacity to. They are basically fish-bodied creatures clamoring up onto the deck of a ship seems to be kind of alien to them. No, I mean like they brought me to the ship with the idea that they would put me back on the ship. Yes, that they wanted to get you close enough to the ship that you could pull yourself up or hold on to the anchor or something. So like I grab a rope but I motion to the lady mermaid Mm -hmm. like to come closer. She does. I give her like a little peck on the cheek and smile and then climb back. (laughs) 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 Like a child. All right. (laughs) Don't tell no one. (laughs) And uh, yes, and then you see. And I motion to to hand me the kid and I'll carry him. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Just make a a strength athletics check too, because the weather's terrible. You're getting battered around and slammed around. You're trying to hold on to this guy. Yeah, you're able to hold on to him, uh, basically kind of drape him over your shoulders while also pulling yourself up the rope and heave him onto the deck of the ship. Uh, at this point in time, um, Paulton, just make a dexterity saving throw as you're being knocked about. Mm-hmm. Ooh, 10. Okay, you are engulfed by a wave and uh, heaved overboard. Right. Dang it! <laughs> I, ex- I, see the, I see the wave coming at me, and I'm just like, oh, come on! <laughs> Splash! And I motion to the mermaids, like, that one, that one, that one! Yeah, and moments later, you are fetched up out of the water by a, 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 a dashing merman. Ooh. Sup? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he, he sort of lifts you, keeps you up uh, well above the waves. By which time you can see the f- storm giants are just levitating in the air, kind of hanging there. The ship has sort of gone past them at this point, but they're still encanting their big spells. Uh, but the merfolk are able to get you back to the ship to a point where you, you can basically grab some ropes and hang on. Cool. And they'll, they follow you. Enough? they'll follow you just in case you get battered off again. Cool. Did they hear enough of my song for me to have helped? Uh, <laughs> they heard like the first three chords, which were great and probably enough to help them. Okay, Absolutely. cool. I'm going to... Uh, so am I up on the ship now? Uh, no, you're just sort of hanging on the side of the ship by a rope. You oh, can try to okay. pull yourself up with an athletics check. I, okay, that sounds like... Actually, could I... 
actually use animate object and just have the rope like pull me up on because yeah. I don't trust my strength. Yeah, you could do that. Cool. All I'd right. really just like in like it to like lift me up and then immediately tie me. I'm. Just, <laughs> yeah. So it sort of wraps around your waist and then yoinks you up the side of the ship brings you over top, just sort of flops you onto the deck, and then immediately starts to spin itself around and tighten all around you until you're all done up good. It's like, either this clears up or I die in this rope. <laughs> <laughs> and the rest of you see this rope just sort of all around him and thunk, tie off. All right. Uh, Diath has sort of managed to uh, keep the ship on a non-destructive course. He is tied yeah. off by Strix. Strix, you're tying yourself off near, yeah, it's near just the like wheel. Crying. Tying yeah, <laughs> you can see Diath is really kind of struggling with this wheel. I'll, I'll help him with the wheel. Okay. Yes, please. I'll assist All right. him. All right, Diath, just make an assisted so you get advantage on the check. Yeah. Uh, intelligence. Strix is like, are we pirates? <laughs> <laughs> Diath doesn't answer. Uh, I just assume like uh, Strix just grabbing on to like right where Diath's hands yeah. are too. Yes. So, like, we're all, you're both together. On the wheel. You are one. Uh, hold. Thank God for advantage. Uh, 18. Okay, you rule the seas for the next 30 seconds. You feel like <laughs> cool. master of, of the oceans as, as you uh, uh, guide this ship. And uh, you don't have any further problems after that point. And then suddenly the waves and everything just sort of subside and the sky directly above you seems to open up. And you see, you see clear, clear sky. Uh, and, and the giants are sort of a little bit well past behind you now. And after they've, uh, you, can, you can almost see this path ahead through the sea as the sea just sort of calms in front of you. Is it just like that one part of the sea is like the rest still absolutely they're, they're actually it's actually getting those. wider and wider and wider the safety area they are literally okay. pushing the storm out of your path so but, it's like this it's like this v shape of clear water why ever widening in front of you and soon is, you are just uh the storm is only behind you is there signs of captain otome or any of the others or anything you have not seen the captain, but the uh, crewman who you saw dashed over, uh, who was yelling at you, is safely back on the ship. Okay. Thanks to Evelyn. But the captain... Uh, are mermaid friends still nearby? That could yeah, and uh, as, uh, so they, they sort of disappeared under the water. Um, and you see the storm giants after they cast sink down into the sea. All right. Uh, At this I... point, the crew members are starting to untie themselves, realizing they are out of danger. And uh, the first mate, whose name is Grig Rudell, he's an older man with a salt and pepper beard, a big sort of bear of a human fellow. Uh, okay. he, he basically barks commands and tells them to secure lines and uh, check the sail and all that business and makes his way up toward the wheel. Okay, yeah, as he's doing that, Diaz still holding the wheel, will just look over at that guy and just be like, help! <laughs> yeah, you see him take the wheel with one hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, it's Strix too, is on it, just like, <laughs> takes off her noodle arms. Yeah. Uh, you're not sure exactly what he did, but he makes it look quite easy. Uh, cool. Um, but cool. yes, he, he sort of takes control, and the ship sails out of danger. Yay. Uh, yeah, Diaz will just kind of relinquish command of the ship and just like back away, but almost kind of stumble back and fall uh, just onto his butt, uh, just, just so sopping wet. Okay. Yeah, I think Strix is going to mimic that same exact <laughs> thing and just flop onto the ground. All right. Day six. <laughs> <laughs> Several days have passed. Uh, you have uh, left the distant storm behind your, your ocean, oceanic saviors. Um, a mystery. The, the captain was lost uh, when the ship struck no. the rocks, and uh, Captain Rudell has taken command. Uh, you see that the crew suffers from her absence, both emotionally and in terms of their ability. Uh, Rudell is a much more sort of brusque and not as, not as effective a communicator as uh, his captain was. So he's struggling a bit. Um, 
to uh, keep spirits up. Maybe they just need a nice song. Oh, then can you play them a song? Can you, can you cheer people up? <laughs> <laughs> Paul has decided he's still tied to the show. <laughs> Six days later. <laughs> Never know when the next storm might come. <laughs> uh, man. Paulton just like looks to them like when they ask for his request and it's just like completely blank and then just this whole time he's just kind of been staring out and just uh drinking more than usual and is just more mm -hmm. like since the storm like not a word's been peeped more like simon every day no oh. uh we'll ask later it's fine I think for the first couple days, Eva was probably kind of like giggling to herself a ton and like mm -hmm. touching her lips. But then <laughs> there was, there is this sort of lasting tingle that she sort of feels over those days and it sort of gradually goes away, but it's savored. Yeah. Uh, but then I guess if, uh, if she notices that Paulton hasn't said a single word, mm -hmm. she'll probably uh, find time to go sit next to him and be like, I'm real sorry about your mandolin. Just kind of huffs, just kind of sighs. It's like, you know, I feel like you more than anyone knows where that mandolin was from. That was super loud. I think you know that that was one of the last things I had tying me to where I came from. And I didn't want that to be who I was anymore. And it felt like I was ready to get rid of the last reminiscing pains of my past and embrace what felt like a new family that I had. And then when their goddamn stupidity and self-righteousness got in the way and almost got us killed, said... Maybe I should have just held on to that and sold it when we got to where we're going. You know, for once I was like, like I haven't, I haven't, you know, sacrificed anything and I'm not one to, you know, throw my life away. But maybe this is it. But apparently not. Because we still blew up half a city. Killed God knows how many people. So. You want to be sorry for the mandolin. You're wasting your time. But if everyone. I don't know. When he says I don't know. She takes his hand and says no tell me. It wasn't about that. It's about something that now I'm not even sure if that's even the right decision anymore. What do you mean? I don't think a day goes by where I think, what the hell am I doing with these lunatics? I have died more since knowing y'all 
and yet I can't bring myself to leave. And that is infuriating because all my life I've just done what I can to get by and not put myself in harm's way. And the fact that there's something I can't put my finger on that makes me want to stick around with something that's probably going to get me killed again. It's just against everything I've ever known. I don't know how to feel about it. Well, for what it's worth, I'm glad you haven't left yet. Thanks. Diaz, make a, a dirt perception but, check. Oh, no. <laughs> That's no, no fun. For it's just never, it's never fun. Uh, 25. You hear a strange humming noise. And I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> and it, it, you, you sort of able to very quickly track it to your key ring. Oh, God. Uh, what does that mean? And as you as you uh, look at your keys, how would you have? A, how many did you have? Uh, at this point, mm -hmm. including I the one you got back from the bomb. Right. Um, it's five. Uh, I want to say four. Uh, I have three. Three okay. altogether. When you do a count, you realize you now have four. What? No. And this can't be good. You see, one of them has a strange symbol. A new, uh, one you haven't had before that has appeared on the ring has a strange symbol on part of it. It's a silvery key, and the symbol looks like a sort of crescent moon lying like bowl-shaped with a dot above it. Looks like this. Oh no. <laughs> and that's just on my key ring? Yes. Um, I got one of those in the mail. <laughs> oh no. And okay. that's where we'll stop. <laughs> oh no! Oh no. <laughs> oh so, no. I got, we got a package, uh, Jared. Um, which we were intending to send to you, but it got rebounded by the mail service. So it came with a letter and a key that looks just like this. I got one! It said, Dearest sir or madame, if you are reading this, then you may yet prove indispensable in a matter of the gravest importance to my world. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I, Elminster, Sage of Shadowdale, found myself in possession of a magical artifact that held within it the deepest secrets of the Forgotten Realms. Now... All mages know that there is nothing quite so powerful as knowledge, and when secrets fall into the wrong hands, there can be nothing quite so dangerous. So paramount was the need for secrecy that I dared not even refer to the stone by name, and so forbidden were its contents where I did not, that I did not trust even one such as myself to keep it safe from those who would use its secrets for ill. Nor was there anywhere in the Forgotten Realms I could hide the artifact that was sure to remain safely beyond my enemy's reach. And when there is no suitable hiding place to be found anywhere in the realm, one must turn his sights to realms beyond your so-called... Well, enough of that. Secrets yet to be revealed. No stone unturned, as they say. Yours sincerely, Elminster Omar, Sage of Shadowdale. Great. Hashtag no stone unturned. <laughs> oh no! I didn't even look at mine yet, but it's a little thing. It's a USB key. It's a USB key. I was kind of scared of it to be honest. Diaz isn't a USB key. Oh. Yeah. 
I wish my address was updated properly. So, Jared, no, I'm Jared, Jared's is, but so yeah, you live locally. You can come by. I have some books for you anyway. You have to come by. And yeah. Them. So. All right. And then you can see what's on the key, Jared. Yay! Anyway, that's Jared's note, not DS note. DS just got a key. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Does it, can he use that one? Is it just like a normal Oh, of course. Key? Well, no. <laughs> it, it looks completely different from all my other keys, yes. I'd imagine. Yes, yes. Somebody magically placed it on your key ring, but other than oh. that, it does not look like the other keys. Cool. All right. Um, so, any news before we part this week? Uh, this did not, by the way, this did not go as expected at all. The counter what? spell, <laughs> the counter spell changed everything. I'm sorry. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, it, was, it was wonderful. It was great. Oh, it was um, scary and yeah. we're dumb. The end. <laughs> like, that's like our tagline anyway. So like if you tuned in for something other than that, like you probably just shouldn't It have. was marvelous. It was do great. Do we get to do the rest of the boat ride next week? Uh, yeah. The, the, oh, the boat ride continues next week. Um, on on, on calmer waters. Over fun things. Yeah, on calmer uh, waters. So we have a big event coming up. Uh, this campaign is going to crash into it uh, very soon. And it is the stream of many eyes in LA. Many, many groups playing lots and lots of D&D &D in a spectacular setting with some crossover potential. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, Dark and Dicey will be there. Dark and Dicey just had mm -hmm. their first game yesterday. Yeah. We had our first episode yes. last night. If you missed it, uh, it's on Wizards' YouTube channel. You can watch the whole thing. Yep. Uh, thanks, everyone, for the support. It's been really cool. It's been a ton of fun. And excited to be putting more D&D &D, D &D to my life that I have time for. Yes. But it's fine. Nate's yeah. a great bird on the show. Yep. Great bird. I try. I play a sad little bird boy. A bird boy. <laughs> it made me laugh so hard I snorted alone. In the <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh, Trapped in the Birdcage is still on Thursdays. Yep. We have one more episode until our season finale, so it's going to be fun. Okay, so this will be the next. This week will be the penultimate episode, yes. and then yeah, exactly. the season finale. The Got next, it. The next week is season right. finale. Yes, and I'm I'm very excited. It's great, and Anna will be there too, of course. Yep. I have no new episode of Miss Click's D and D Lost Mind tonight because one of our characters is away. But uh, we're doing a marathon of all previous ten episodes. I'm a DECA DM now, so, uh, but if you're tuning in now, I should probably be a better DM than if you tuned in earlier in the day, so if you want to watch that, it's on twitch.tv slash misclicks right now, and uh, yeah, I guess that's it till uh, Thursday and the series many years. As always, there's the Dice Camber Action subreddit where you can go and join the community. Uh, all kinds of fun discussions happening there, lots of fan <laughs> theories. Lots of really cool fan art. Lots of people uh, saying that we're suboptimal. <laughs> Letting well, us know exactly how terrible yeah. we are. Spam the hell out of that yeah. link. You got it! Oh, um, <laughs> Anna, I'm sorry. I, I tuned out for a second there. Did you talk about Idle Champions at all? Oh, yeah. That, I knew there was something okay. huge I was supposed to announce. I was, like, killing myself. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Surprise! Evelyn is going to be an Idol Champion! Yay! Yes. Strix like friends! Yeah! If you, if you have never heard of Idol Champions, it's an awesome video game, and they have brought Evelyn to life to join the cast of characters. And so over the next little while, you'll see lots of art coming out, and you'll be able to play her in-game soon, just like you did Strix! <gasps> Yay. Yay! And Strix won't be alone, correct? <laughs> I decided they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, then that concludes this week's adventure. We'll be back next week for more Waffle Crew action. Uh, and uh, until then, uh, no stone unturned, misclicks, dark and dicey, D&D &D is everywhere. All right. Fill, Bye, up, fill up your schedules. Cheers. Glad we're all still alive. <laughs> <laughs> next Physically. week might be different. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. We'll get to water deep ah! eventually. <laughs> and mermaid kisses are awesome. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cheers, everybody. Bye bye. All right. <laughs>